it is a beautiful Tuesday morning, and I'm telling you, uh, a little cooler than it has been, a little bit uh, kind of muggy, a little bit. You can tell my hair's curly today. See, you can always tell my hair. I'm like Tim. See, Tim's got curly hair, too. We got something going on here. We may be kin folks, Tim. <laughs> I don't know. We both got curly hair today. But it is one of those things. Um, the humidity is very dense, very heavy, very yuck. And it means that we probably have some more rain coming in, 60% chance of showers coming in, and I kind of feel it in the air. I hope that you've had a great, great weekend. I hope you had a safe, safe Labor Day. And let me tell you about our travels this weekend. I got this information about a, a house that I need to go look at. And I said, okay, we'll go do that. And I kept looking at the area, and I said, well, I kind of know the area, but uh, I don't know. And then the more we kind of Googled and got information, I knew somebody who could get me right there. And so we loaded up and we went to Odom Chumley Road over in Dawson County. Now for you folks who have never been to the backwoods of Dawson County, if you don't know about, about Devil's Elbow, then you haven't lived in Dawson County long enough. But Devil's Elbow is a swimming hole that lots of people for many, many years have enjoyed. It is also the swimming hole where lots of baptizing has gone on. So if, you are, if you're a country Baptist, I bet you know where Devil's Elbow is. But we went over there. We Beautiful sights, beautiful scenes, beautiful old home place. And this home, the house, the first house on the road, just sold with 50 acres for over $500,000. It is a home that I would say was probably built in the late 1800s, and then later another house was built. And <clears throat> you can kind of tell it's generational thing because it has a corn crib out there and it has a small barn, and it has probably, it looks like something that was probably a um, blacksmith shop. <clears throat> so it's really, really cool. And it is just about four miles from Amicalola Falls, so not very far. So we got to see some beautiful scenes and you're gonna see some of those photos now. So if you're looking for four acres with a beautiful, beautiful creek and a hundred year old home that needs a lot of work, but it has the most beautiful setting in the world. It is just rural country and half the realtors in this community will say, we always get a call and somebody is looking for, I need four to five acres with a creek. Honey, we got you, four to five acres with a creek. But it also has this 100-year-old home, and the home needs lots and lots and lots of tender, loving care, but it is a fantastic property. The property is just somewhere you want to take your kids and teach them to garden. You want to teach them about the, the creeks and the waterways and uh, uh, it's just it's beautiful it's absolutely beautiful so we're going to share those photos with you and we're also going to share the pictures of Tyler Spear as he won his race he won everything this weekend he like excelled and did so well with everything and it was one of those he's only been doing this like a couple of years he he left auto racing and he went to boats and when he did he was like okay, let's try this thing out. And all of a sudden he started winning, winning, winning. And um, he is an amazing young man. He has done so well in a very new sport for him. And here we go. Okay, there's Tyler and the group. And congratulations to Tyler Spear. Y'all got to meet him here on ETC. Actually, Freddie <coughs> found him in Woodstock and we brought him to the studio. He was racing cars then. He is now racing boats <laughs> and he is amazing. He is absolutely amazing. And, and more than that, he's a really, really good kid. So uh, I'm so proud of him and so proud to honor him. And he got the win. And you see that little thing he's sitting on? That sucker goes fast. It goes really, really, really fast. <laughs> so, and his parents, uh, a big part of why he's doing what he's doing. Just, just a great, great family. And I'm so proud of him. So that was an awesome win. And that is really cool. And this talks about what he did. And you know, he won something. He, he just started doing this a few years ago, and now not only is he the number one qualifier in the thing, he won the High Points Championship and Pro Modified, and, and that is really, really cool. And he has a lot of sponsors, a lot of people who, who love him and support him and follow him. And so if you are a Tyler Spear fan, he won it all this weekend. So awesome, awesome job. That is too very, very cool. And uh, 
His, his brother is a dentist, so if you need a dentist, we got you a dentist. We'll send you two, too, but just a, a great guy, just a wonderful guy. Now, we're going to share some photos with you over in Dawson County, and some of the pictures I took, um, I love the sound of a creek. I just love the sound of a creek. And I was standing there with my phone, and I was listening, and it was so dead quiet over there. And I thought, we are 15 minutes outside Dawsonville, 15 minutes outside Ella J, and about 20 minutes outside Ball Ground. And we're in dead silence. Now this, y'all, this is hysterical. This is last week, and it wasn't too funny. You see all these big trucks? They're on a road where big trucks aren't allowed, but we had a little uh, problem in Ball Ground last week. And it was kind of weird. A power pole got snapped right beside our office. And so they rerouted the traffic from 372. Now this is a truck getting up on the curb because he couldn't swing wide because there's not enough room for big trucks on that road. It was crazy, y'all. And it happened so quickly. The power pole got snapped. All of a sudden traffic had to shut down and it was shut down for about seven or eight hours. And it meant that to get home, I had to kind of go over the river and through the woods to Grandma's house. But um, it was hysterical because nobody was hurt, thank God, because it was one of those things when the power line went down, it could have been really bad. Now, this is up on Revis Mountain, and this was a Sunday. This is a new way to do a Sunday afternoon drive. So if you would like to take a Sunday afternoon drive, just load up your mules and head up Revis Mountain, and there you go. And is that not the coolest thing ever? And um, that reminds me, my granddaddy had, had mules and loved it, loved it, loved it. Now, this is part of the property over on Odom Chumley Road. And this is the home that was built in the 1800s. This one does not go with this property, but that is the coolest, coolest house. And you can just see the chimney in the distance. That's the house in the form it's in right now. And that is not the house that we have, but that's one that just sold with 50 acres. And it's a really, really cool property. So... And this is the road going down to the uh, property that we have available, and it is, it is really cool. Now this, for you city slickers, this is Devil's Elbow. And Devil's Elbow is a place that everybody, for years and years and years, for 75 years, have been over there swimming, baptizing. This is where they hold the baptizings. This is also where all the kids hang out and everybody goes swimming. And on um, Sunday when we went through there, there were cars packed everywhere. There were people from, uh, tags from everywhere. So I don't know how people... And that is the scene, y'all. Is that not beautiful? That is the scene. And there's the power pole. That's what caused all the hysteria on the street. And uh, this is a piece of the property that um, we have had for sale. And it just blows my mind at how quickly things are selling. If you have anything to sell, we are looking for listings. We need listings. We have people coming, we have people wanting to buy, and it is getting very hard to supply their demands. So, so please, if you are thinking about moving, if you're thinking about, hey, it's time to go downsize, if you want to move closer to your kids and grandkids, we're doing that. We're working with a family right now that they're moving up in the Carolinas to be near their grandchildren. We love that because it gives us something to list. It's a very tough time. We also have some great news about the amazing development coming to Vile Ground. This is going to be called Farmer's Crossing. And I actually, we went out to Bethesda Cemetery on Sunday. And um, I have to say thank you to the farmer family descendants because the farmer dad and then Calvin Farmer, the next generation, and then Zonely Haynes, the next generation, and generational, 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 they all had this property for many, many years. And it started actually at Bethesda Church and came all the way up into downtown Ballground. They owned property everywhere. And this is their, the last of that family property. And it is going to be developed by a wonderful developer out of the Marietta area. And he is world-renowned. He has excelled in everything he does. We could not have found a better developer to do what he's doing. And he is doing an ace job with everything. It is going to be amazing. They're going to start building townhomes. And these will start at $335,000 to $450,000 for a townhome. And then they're going to go up on the ridge and they're going to start building homes. And those homes will just go to the limit, whatever you want to build. And um, they're going to be very, very nice homes overlooking Ball Ground, which is really, really cool. And again, thank you to Linwood Developers because they 
we've had so many developers look at the property, but nobody had a vision that would really work and, and make this work. And this is going to put beautiful homes in a great price point um, where people can walk to downtown ball ground, and that's what it's about. So as I watch the progress every day, I'm seeing it become reality. And um, by November, the road should be in, and then building should happen. And by February, we should have some new residents there, and I'm excited about it. You know, as I hear and look and watch and listen to people, um, some people have negativity about what's going on. And I'm just, you know, I live right there at it. So if it's something that I would approve and be so thankful for, I guarantee you it's the right product and we're very, very pleased with it. So congratulations to Linwood and um, to everybody who was involved in this. It is a great project and Ball Ground should be very proud of it. Okay guys, we've got something I wanna share with you today. This is, um, yesterday I woke up and realized it's September the 6th. I became a young widow and I was left with uh, my children were already, everybody was grown and gone except Nick. And um, I had to deal with reality. And during that reality time, the first thing I did was plan my husband's funeral. And then the next thing I did was learn how to live. We did a business together. We raised our children together. We had a, a life together for many, many years. And then he had the nerve to get cancer and die on me. And when he did, I had to move on with my life. And I moved on with my life, but I was very slow at doing that. Um, I didn't know how to accept that it was just me. It wasn't us, it was just me. And it was very, very tough. And so my daughters, thank God, um, stepped in and said, Mama, we're gonna keep you busy, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this, da 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 da. Well, very shortly after my husband's death, I started being on ETC. And it was really crazy how it all started and it all happened. And it was, I was remodeling the farmhouse and somebody came to interview me. And then I was doing something else and somebody came to interview me. And I just kept, and people just kept coming to interview me and we just kept talking. And then all of a sudden, I ended up on ETC. And I found some footage of something that we're gonna be sharing in the near future. It's one of the first things I ever did on here on ETC. And it is something that I'm very, very proud of because if you know my story, you know that it hasn't been an easy ride becoming a widow very young, having a daughter that was a drug addict, dealing with all kinds of emotional problems with my daughter, Angela. But you got to see Angela at her very, very best. And today you're gonna get to see her again because I pulled something out that she is so bubbly, she is smiling, she is so happy. And it's because our friend Emery Samples came to visit. And Emery Samples' wife, Sue, used to work for me. And so we have a long history and um, then Angela and Emery's son were girlfriend and boyfriend in like the eighth grade. So we have a long history with this family. But nobody understood that Emery Samples is really a mini version of his daddy. He just preaches instead of fishing and drinking. So there was a little difference there. You know, here's Emery, he's the preacher, and here's Junior, he might have had a drink or two, and he was the fisherman. But they had so much fun growing up. Um, country as grits, just and, and salt of the earth, wonderful, wonderful people. So today, if you haven't met Emory Samples in the past, you're going to get to meet him today as Angela and I visit with him. When I go through the programs that feature she and my, my granddaughter, um, it is such a joy to have those. And after what I've seen with COVID, and after I've seen a husband pass, a wife pass, a child pass, I've seen so much horrible loss with COVID. I understand now that so many people are going through what I went through, just a little different trip. You, these, these moments, these memories, these pictures, these videos, aren't we fortunate that we have iPhones that capture the moment? Aren't we fortunate that we have our grandmother's laughter? Aren't we fortunate that we caught those first moments of a wedding that then ended tragically, and, but we have those moments to remember. And that's what it's about. And you know, all of y'all know that we usually end our program with um, The Bright Side. And it is a song that Kaylee Shea, just, she just, she comes out alive in that song. And you know the tragic story of her mother lost her daughter on her wedding day. But her mother, continues to laugh, continues to remember, and that's what we have to do. And as I look around me, I've chosen not to have any guests for a while because COVID has 
become more real than I like it. It has taken a lot of lives. It has taken lives of people we know. It continues to take lives. And, and we just want to be safe. And so we're going to use some recorded stuff. We're going to still bring you things that I think you're going to enjoy. And I'm going to try to be here every day myself, but I'm not going to bring in guests for a while because I just feel really strange about this, the way it's spreading quickly through the schools, the way it's spreading quickly through employers, the way it is spreading. At first they said it was just going to get old people, and now I know a family that three children have it. And we've been praying for them and just hoping that everything's going to be okay. This strain of this junk has really gone crazy. And so for protection and for my sanity, um, I don't want to be worried about people I don't know very well and where have they been, who have they been with. So we're going to be safe. And I, and I think that makes sense to me and I hope it does to you. So today you're going to get to see my beautiful daughter, Angela as she was glowing and happy because she loved Emory and, and it, it's just it's really weird to look back and see the happy laughter in her face and then to know that at the end it was it was really really hard and if you know somebody who is out there battling depression please please get them help please make that phone call please sit down and say hey you're going to be okay I didn't see it coming um, everybody around me did and I kept saying no she's going to be fine she's going to be fine I was wrong so um, keep the memories, treasure those moments, and capture, the, capture everything you can on a video. I can guarantee you one day you will sit back and you will, you will finally be able to smile again and to laugh again. So here we go to my beautiful daughter Angela and Emery Samples. Hello. Emery, I love Hee Haw, and I love your cool little daddy. Now everybody, kind of made fun of Hee Haw and looked at us like we were all rednecks. We're proud to be rednecks, yeah, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. That's right. yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, did you ever want to leave your heritage and say, no, I want to be a big city slicker? Never. No, no. Never. Daddy didn't either. No, no. daddy did not. <laughs> no. Now, we talked about your dad. I've been to the grave where he, he's buried over in Forsyth County. He yeah. died very young. Yeah. Tell me what happened to him. <coughs> he had a heart attack is what uh, uh, killed him and the doctor you've said had now you've had triple bypass oh yeah, is I've that had right triple bypass so was daddy's hereditary and, did yeah, you some of it it's, that thing from family and from food and just just different things and yeah. we'll say daddy was like me we ain't meeting if we ain't eating yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes he and did I, like tea and i got a little of all of it already, yeah so yeah. i'm just really blessed yeah. <laughs> now we have a long history when your daddy died my mama came down and spent the week at your house and took care of your children you know, I didn't know if you even knew that until yeah, yeah. we spoke a, a word yeah. or two. And she her did, mama and she was a cooked. good cook, so oh, y'all got well. to eat, didn't yeah, you? <laughs> she, she, she cooked, and she washed clothes for us, and looked after the kids while we were at the funeral home, and, yeah. and she was just wonderful. What was it like to see people from everywhere honoring your daddy? I couldn't, I couldn't hardly tell you. It was kind of... We, we come from a family of just, just nothing. I mean, you know... Uh -huh. If, if you watch, and he's serious. Yeah, I mean, if you ever watch, yeah. my, my daddy went to California and filmed "This Is Your Life" on a Ralph Edwards show. I uh -huh. know you don't remember nothing uh, like that, but I you do, might. Yeah. And uh, they did his they did his life story, and, and they were some of the, some of the folks come on and said they remembered when he had toe sacks wrapped around his feet and tied yeah. with inner shoe, inner tubes. Oh, you yeah. know. Oh, yeah. You probably don't want an inner tube yeah. in, but yeah. a piece of rubber you yeah. cut off the inside yeah. of the tire. Right, because they couldn't afford yeah. shoes. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. And wow. so, so we come from that kind of family to, to this, and <coughs> I quit driving a tractor and trailer and went to work with my daddy. I drive him. He, he wanted his car there. Uh -huh. And a lot of times he'd fly summers, and, and I'd have to meet him there with the car, and, and I'd have to leave a day or two early because he wanted his car. He didn't want to rent a car. Right. He didn't want no tax. He wanted his car. Right. So we went in some places if he hadn't have been if it hadn't been junior samples, we wouldn't have got in. Right. I mean, they were, those people honestly took coats off and, and ties and stuff and, and the offered them to daddy where, yeah. where he could come in. But uh, he didn't want their coats and their ties neither, you know. Right. But <laughs> finally he got was in. what he was. He was what he was. He yeah. was what he was. And when I, I think saw him, he had his overalls on. Oh, yeah, yeah all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. all the time. He, wore, he, wore, he got him a, a suit, only, only one he ever had, I guess. To, to fly with, where people wouldn't recognize him so bad, but they still knew who he was. Right. Yeah. You know. yeah. yeah. You, you want people to recognize you. I mean, you know, he loved people and loved to be around mm -hmm. people, but <coughs> you couldn't, you couldn't get nowhere and you couldn't do nothing. I mean, people, people just heard you. I oh, mean, yeah. you'd, you'd be surprised what it I be remember like to get him showing me his hat room that was in the basement part of the house. Yeah. The hat yeah. room, and it had yeah. so many hats in it. 
Yeah. You been, you'd have been in the basement of the house? I was. I was oh, in there, that. yeah. Oh, Lamar took me there one time yeah, to, meet, yeah. to meet his grandpa yeah. and to see the house, yeah. 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 Well. And I remember I was so stupid, okay? I'm just in the eighth <laughs> grade. And when we went into the carport and mm. the dimes that uh, were glued down yeah. that said, what was it, Junior and... Junior and Grace. Yeah. Well, I they were kind of dust covered and I went to pick one up because yeah. I said, Lamar, there's a dime. And he started laughing and I yeah. felt like the big dummy. Yeah. Yeah. He was like, step back and read it. I said, oh my Lord. <laughs> Do you still have that house, their house? Oh yes, mother still is. She's still there? Okay. That was, that, they had a plastic coating sprayed over that. Right. Whole, yeah, you couldn't pick those dimes up. <laughs> but That's funny. All the cars and things and all the traffic and through the years, it's, most all of it's come loose. They yeah, still some it? of it does. Right. Yeah. And they had a picture of the donkey, you know, the hee-haw donkey. Mm -hmm. Now, how that. did your dad go from a man with absolutely nothing to being on national television every week? How did he get this job? <coughs> I don't know if i got time to tell you all that or well, not. Well, just start, time got, let's <laughs> see. <laughs> I, drove a, I drove a race car. Over on what we call it over on the mountain. Right. And and my Sony daddy, Mountain, and uh -huh, I will say right, Sony right, Mountain. Right, we all for you guys who aren't yeah. from South County. Yeah. We've got a long history here, so <laughs> y'all go ahead. Okay. And, and I was over I was over at the race. Were you fast? One, one night. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He was he was racing with them Turner boys. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, go ahead. I didn't know if you knew any oh, Turner all boys. Of this. Oh, You've been around too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I was over at the races and my daddy's brother. Uh, Monroe had found a fish head. Now this is the this is the honest truth. He found this fish head, a huge head thrown out in the creek below his house, and it had a tag in its mouth, 22 pound nine ounce or whatever it was. Uh -huh. Anyway, it looked just like a bass head, and he brought it and showed it to my daddy, and people got together and around looking. You know, before the race started, people got together and around looking, and the rest of the announcers come down. And they want to know who caught it, and, and Daddy's brother never did say nothing. And Daddy finally said, "I caught it." And, and it was a big mouth bass, and wh which is Daddy didn't know anything about it, but which it was the world's biggest. And I mean, you know, the biggest <laughs> biggest bass ever been caught. It was a record. Uh -uh. And then the game and fish commissioners got a hold of it. And oh, Lord. Daddy said, "Daddy said, well, they come down there the next morning. Jim Morrison did with with game and fish, and said he he wanted a story. And Daddy said he drunk him about a pint that morning, and said he's just gonna." <laughs> Just gonna give him a story. So he wasn't gonna leave with that one. <laughs> and he told him a story, and, and Nashville was a. I told my wife before we left while ago. I said, you know, I hope Nashville don't get a hold of this, because I'm liable to be gone. <laughs> but but anyway, Nashville got a hold of it, and they, and they was fixing to start the hee-haw show, and they said, this is the kind of talent that we're looking right. for. Just somebody, somebody like this. Yes, to do. And he yeah. Was, and, he, and he was just junior <coughs> every day. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> no matter where he's at, he just junior. Oh you know? yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Now he died at 57. 57. 57. Right. And your mom still lives. How old is she? Mom's, mom is 82, and and she's really doing. doing good? She's really doing good for, good. for her age, good. I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now you are busy today. You do two things. You preach. Yes, that's you number, preach. number one. That's number one. Yeah. And and we have to say one of your sons is also preaching. Yeah, Larry. Mm -hmm. Larry's preaching. But you, your sister owns quite a few restaurants. Yes, her and her husband's got 70, I believe, the best uh -huh. I can remember. And you and Lamar are involved in that business. We, yeah, we are. And let me tell you, he's the only man I ever knew. I called him at five after five to nine one night. They were in the bed asleep. <laughs> and I said, are y'all sick? And so he said, no, Emory goes to bed early every night. And I thought, Lord, have mercy. Y'all were in the bed asleep, but you said your day starts at 3 a.m. Sunday yeah. morning, Monday oh, morning, Lord. you leave and go out on the road. Yeah. Uh, since I had, since I had uh, uh, open heart surgery, I had, uh, I always try to read my Bible hour every morning. Now, I've come slack, don't, don't misunderstand, I don't, uh -huh. but, but I used to try to read it an hour every morning, uh -huh. and I'd exercise an hour, and I'd jog an hour, and <clears throat> I'd get up and fix my own breakfast, I didn't want to wake Sue up that early. And get up and fix my good breakfast. Man. Good, man. Do, oh, good man. Good man. Good <laughs> man. And, and do all my stuff. And it took a long time. So I just got my system is used to, after years, is used to getting up at 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning. So I try to get to bed at 8 or 9 if I can so I can wow. get a little sleep. Yeah. And, and I just, I just still, Sunday, don't make no difference, I still get up early. Yeah. And, and when, when they change the time. You get up in the middle of the night, you get up when I go to bed. Yeah, that's what <laughs> a lot of people say that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But <clears throat> when, when, they, when they change the time, it kind of, <clears throat> throws people off in church, you yeah, know, yeah. and people will be late and early mm -hmm. and this, that, and other. But I'm always up anyway. I, uh, 
especially on Sunday. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's a, yeah. you'll be up about on Sunday morning. Yeah. Uh, you don't got to go to work. <laughs> now, you, you've been preaching. You preached some up near Mineral Bluff, Georgia. Uh, right, right out of Mineral Bluff. Uh, River Valley. River Valley. I told you buy or something a uh -huh. while ago, I think, but River River Valley. Okay. And, uh, oh, we just love it. You love, love this area, don't you? We love it. Our people, yeah. uh, people around you, you get out of the big city life and, and people will love you now and he's he's talking about forsyth county used to be a okay. little tiny right. nothing mm -hmm. right forsyth county is now atlanta georgia oh yeah it might as well yeah. be yeah. atlanta georgia sure is. it is yeah. very different isn't it yeah. do y'all all still live over there close to where your daddy's house was oh yeah just in holland yeah. just i know right. that when lamar took me there that day that all the houses were within because his grandpa was out there and they were working on one of the houses building it or something and really? they were all real yeah. close yeah mm-hmm you and don't know what year that be, was, do you? I don't guess. It was 82, 83? Yeah, yeah. yeah, about 83. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God, I've told my age. And y'all <laughs> used to be in the construction business. All, all of our life about yeah. it. I mean, I drove a tractor and trailer when me and Sue was first married when I was a kid. And then I quit that and drove for a day to a while. But mo most all of our life we've been in construction. Mm -hmm. it, it just, of course, it died. died. It yeah, died. Yeah, it now, died. Now, let's talk a little bit about your sister's restaurants. Tell me about them. Oh, uh, when, when... And how many does she have? 70. 70. Wow. Uh, I think they're going to build a hundred. Uh, it's, it's what they're talking, you know. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, and do they go from Mississippi to the Carolinas? Mm -hmm. They're, they're all they in go? North Carolina. Oh, okay. Right now. Oh, now my he's, goodness. He's okay. talking about moving maybe to South Carolina, maybe even to Georgia, but that's just talk, you mm -hmm. know. So we don't know. You don't get you don't get them out too far. You can't look at them. Right. And, and he's a man that is about his business. He looks at his business, mm -hmm. and, and you know most everybody thinks somebody was saving the restaurants. He's laid up down there on the beach somewhere or another. But no. he does live in Daytona. And he's got a home in Texas. But but he looks about his business. He, mm -hmm. He's in North Carolina as much as down there. And, and we love it. He told us when we went to work for him. Said there's just no end. Uh -huh. And and I never dreamt of that. See we. We frame a house or whatever we do and, and run siding on it and, and cornish on it and, and we get through and we start right. having but we're on a job now there's no end just yeah. night and day seven days a week if we want to do you know right. so there's really? no end to the wow. world so and i'm it's really kinda, blessed it's kind of like a dairy queen extraordinaire a yes, little bit yeah. yes it is uh, what's the name of it it's a cookout but it's uh Oh, Do they have yeah. char-grilled hamburgers? Exactly. Lord, I love the taste of char-grilled food. Yeah. It is and so good. I'll tell you something else. Some of the, one, of the, one of the man managements told me that day, the, the <coughs> not managed, but the, we worked with the maintenance, and the, and the main maintenance man told me he tried to get him to, to buy his meat. He could do it a whole lot cheaper. But, you know, he grinds his own meat, patties his own meat, packs his own meat, carries his own meat to the restaurant. I believe he's got eight trucks that delivers fresh meat Every day, wow. so you don't get no, you don't get no junk. I mean, it's just wow. like cooking at home, uh -huh. except it's, you don't have to do it. <laughs> yeah, now, is it their own chain that they just it, developed it, it, themselves, it or did yeah, they? It's, it's okay, no, nobody else involved. Mm -hmm. And it's called the cookout. The cookout. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we need to encourage people who might be traveling through the Carolinas. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So he's so, kind of like the Colonel or Dave that did Wendy's. He's started his own thing. Yeah. Now, now see, they started Wendy's, or they was in on. They had several right. Wendy's stores okay. at one time. All right. You know, somebody All told right. me the other day I had never have asked more. It's none of my business. So, but you know, somebody told me the other day they had, he still had some. So uh -huh. you know, I don't know why he does or not. But yeah. I know he's got a lot of cookouts. Now <laughs> let me ask you about your sister. Is she a redneck country girl? Kathy. Yeah. Yes. Good. Oh, yeah. Good. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. So y'all are a lot like your daddy. Are yeah. there any other siblings? Oh yeah, I got another sister, and I, well, there's four boys and two girls. Okay. Yeah. Well, this big family. Do they all still yeah. live around close by? Uh. Oh, but Kathy, she lives in Daytona is the mm -hmm. first first one. Everybody else lives around real close, you know. Mm -hmm. You lived in South Carolina for a while, didn't you? Uh, North, North I, Carolina. I, I'm, I lived in South Carolina just a little while when, mm -hmm. when Lamar and them were young, when yeah. the kids mm -hmm. were young. You know? That's when I met them, when they we, y'all were moving back. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. We moved to a little little poor town up there, and, and I was a manager of a grow, a grow bark, a bark mill, you know, mm -hmm. and moved up there. Yeah, and, and I know... If I talk too much, just tell me. But Lamar was a little bitty feller. Yeah. I mean, I mean, he was. You, you would believe Cute this. Cute as could be, blonde oh, and blue yeah. eyes. Oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah. But, but I drove a tractor and trailer all my life, and and he was a little old feller, and we had a. He uh, was tiny. We had yeah, we had a lift higher than this bucket. It, it, the bucket was high in this room right here, and you could get a a huge dump truck in that thing, and Lamar drove it. Him just a little old kid. Wow. And, and, some of the people would come in from other states to get their truck loaded and they couldn't back their truck to the dock. And, and what happened, Lamar would go out there and get it. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh, funny. He came in the office and told me one day, he said, Daddy, I can't get it in. 
I heard him crank that old yard truck, you know, he'd back them in with. And <clears throat> I heard him crank it, and I looked out the window, and directly he come in and said, I can't get it. He said, you're going to have to back that in for me. I said, just wait a minute, and you'll get it directly. And directly I heard it crank again. I looked out the window, and the first back, he put it around the hole. Uh -huh. You just get it, you know, just get it sided and right. I do that too, can't do nothing. Uh -huh. But I knew, I said, if you just wait, you just wait a few minutes, uh -huh. you get it out of while he's coming off and nearly crying. Uh -huh. <laughs> so if you're just building little. in North Carolina all these restaurants, you're not home much then? No, 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 I don't build them. No. No, we, we just, uh, we clean them. Okay. Maintenance men. Okay. We worked mostly on, me and my son worked on light pole. We changed lights and, and a neon lights. Uh, most all of them's got just gorgeous. But he just loves lights. And I, mm -hmm. I do too. His restaurants is beautiful. We're going to have to hunt one right. down there. Oh, yeah. We're going to oh, yeah. have to find Where's the closest one to, from here? The closest way building you in Nashville will be the closest one. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I think he's building another one in Nashville as we talk. Mm -hmm. I mean, I believe he is right now. So when you're so. gone, are you gone all through the week there? And you just go from store to store? Well, from store to store. We live out of a suitcase and stay in a motel. Wow. You know. Does so go with you? Thursday night, is that right? Say so we leave we leave home Monday morning and come back home Thursday night. Uh -huh. So time you get out there, I, I told her a while ago, time you get out there, it's time to come home. Time you get home, time to go back out there. Right. Now, how do you work doing your four day a week job and then doing your preaching? Do you um, do you have a set church? Where's your church, or do you just travel? I I'm not pastor right now. Okay. I, I left uh, I left my church about three months ago, I guess. Might have been a little longer than that. We closed down the Sunday night service to where I could, where I could go in the Wednesday night service, and you know I thought that was awful nice of them to not to close the service down, but to where I could still be their pastor. You know, mm -hmm. and, uh, so we, you would think people are supposed to love one another, and you get in church, you'd show enough thing to do, but that's not so. I mean, not you know, always. Uh, there's a lot of lot of put on and, and a lot of yes. Faces. I have and, a lot of problems yeah, with that. And a lot of mm -hmm. backbiting and, and, uh, and all the stuff. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, there's everything that goes on in church. Right. Oh, yeah. uh, I'm, I'm glad I, I love people, though. I'm glad I love mm -hmm. God's people. Mm -hmm. Now, how long have you been preaching? <clears throat> Ever since I got saved. When was uh, that? About 25 years. And I, I pastored five churches or six. I'd have to sit down and count them. Old strokes and things you can't remember like you used and to. And you told me you've had how many strokes? I've had several different strokes, but I had triple bypass, and, uh -huh. and I've had uh, the balloon test done that pushes the stuff out of the way, you know. And right. Of course, I don't clean nothing out. It just pushes up to the walls. And, right. And I've had stents, but i got two stents put in, and they've done awful good. The uh, first time, they didn't last but a month or so. Oh, wow. And, and I had to go back. I thought, boy, I'm not going to like this because, you know, it's pretty pretty rough. But, but you've already one. outlived your daddy's life. Oh, yeah. So yeah. you're 60 what? 60. I'll be 63 in October. Okay. okay. See, I, I, can't, I can't remember that. So if your I daddy had had enough. possibly medical, if, and if an alarm had gone off and he'd known he was going to have a heart attack, he could have, you know, gotten something my, fixed. My you? daddy had several little heart attacks Did before he? before he ever had the, the real bad one. And, and he did. He just absolutely did not want to go through none of that open heart surgery and stuff. Aww. But he said that, uh, you know, if, if the Lord wanted to leave him here, he'd just leave him. He didn't. He'd just get him. But he just didn't want to put really? himself through all that. Well. Yeah. And so he, you know, he had a choice. Uh -huh. you know, he, just, he just chose not to not to do all that stuff. So how do you feel now? Do you feel good and healthy? Ninety percent of the time. Uh, That's good. As long as I exercise, like I was telling you a while ago, I've done all my exercise and I yeah. jog. I jog five miles every morning in an wow. hour, in one hour. Every Holy morning. cow! Wouldn't every miss, morning. I wouldn't miss a morning for nothing. <laughs> and, and eat oh my, my Cheerios and, and watch everybody. Cheerios else eat. is gonna love this commercial. <laughs> watch everybody eat ham and bacon. You know me eating Cheerios and, and I did that. And, Heart and, healthy. And, and it yeah. was just, it was just, it was just great. Mm -hmm. But now, since you jog on, on a treadmill. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Now to start with, I didn't have one, and, and I did it on in the yard, and uh -huh. I'd get up two o'clock in the morning, and I'd jog around there. Lord, don't you reckon his neighbors are thinking, "What is that crazy every well, sample?" They, they wasn't no neighbors there. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> we, what we does Sue a, a say? Road, when I'd you get around. out to go run, do this in the middle of the Sue night. Sue about it. <laughs> <laughs> she sleep. <laughs> Sue, did, Sue didn't know when I went to bed and when I got up. <laughs> well, she didn't know when I went to bed. Yeah. She didn't know when I got up and what I done or nothing. Yeah. Uh, wow. I'd go to work and be home, and she's, you know, she's. Didn't know it's better. Yeah. Because I don't nobody get up that early. No, yeah. no, no, no. <coughs>
You do have some strange hours, young man. Yeah. That is some pretty strange hours. You know, we talked about racing over at Sony Mountain. That is something. Um, are any of the Turner guys still alive? Are they all gone? I, I went to I went to Carl's funeral. I was going to ask I, you about Carl. I, I knew he was gone. Dorsey passed away here a while back, and I didn't even know it till till they done buried him. So, and, and last time I talked to Leroy, which is four, five, six months ago, he was in bad shape. The only thing I see that could have made hee-haw any better if Junior had took them Turner boys with him yeah. when he went to Hollywood, because <laughs> yeah, yeah. they were really yeah. redneck, yeah. really good guys yeah. who possibly moonshine and racing had hand in hand, yeah. and, and a lot of the race car drivers did the moonshine thing. Did your daddy ever do moonshine? He, he, made, he made liquor all his life. Right. I mean, through his younger life. Right, you know, and he, that's he how he fed his family. Oh, yeah. He didn't yeah. do it to get rich and famous. No. He did it to feed his family. He never did get rich and famous. A lot of people right. did that said, out of necessity. Yeah. Just I said to my daddy, it's been so long ago, I, I couldn't half remember. I'll be telling you, life, I told you it was a $1 bill or a 5 or a 10 or a 20, I don't know. But it was only a dollar bill he had in his pocket. And I said he'd take it out and, and start a fire with it one time. to run. You, you build a fire to run your liquor off. Right. And, and he done... His matches was all gone out and, and with nothing. He didn't have a thing really prepared and didn't have no paper or no pine or something. And he got that dollar to get the little old limb started. It's all he had that he could burn. Or, oh, or $10 yeah. or whatever it was. It, oh, yeah. it was a lots of money. <laughs> yeah. Because we didn't have none. Right. Wow. Now, did he ever work on a public job? Uh, he worked at he worked at a chicken plant when it was Wilson's. I believe it was Wilson. He worked on a cleanup crew. He, he said he, <laughs> Daddy said he went to work down there and, and he went to the bathroom one night and said he sat there and, and went off to sleep and missed break. <laughs> he said, he said they didn't know about it. He missed his break and he just left that place. <laughs> now, how old was Daddy when he became a hee haw, uh, uh, really a household name? I'd just have to guess. Was in his 30s? Probably about 30, 35, uh -huh. maybe 35. How old were you then? Maybe a 10 year old kid? No, let's see. 15? Eddie might have been a little older than that. No, I was, I was a, me and Sue, me and Sue was married. Okay. We had just, we just got married though when I was 20. And Sue was a 14, so I So that is probably 40 then when you, I guess he when was he probably. got on. Didn't him. seem like he was, but I guess he right. was, yeah, he yeah. must have been 40. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What did your mama think when daddy came in and said, Lord have mercy, I'm going to Hollywood? <laughs> did she just say, well, Junior, you just go on, or did she, was she intimidated by it at all? Well, she 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 loved it. Mother, I think Mother loved it better than Daddy did. Really? But she liked them. She liked to meet the people. And yeah. Them. ATC knows the internet is evolving, taking new twists and turns as we add our input make our choices, and follow the light that connects us all. It's quite a journey, one to experience with the fastest speeds available. Contact ETC. Connect to the internet speed that suits your journey. And enjoy the ride. Whether you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella Day, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meet, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ, how may I serve you? When I first saw a turtle, my heart was full. Not anything but lonely. We have this like deep connection, this heart connection. He just wants to be close to you and part of your life. Every day with turtle is a perfect day. When I'm holding her, it makes me feel calmer. I think everything he does shows how much he loves us. When we adopt a shelter pet, we discover they're a little bit of a lot of things. But they're all pure, pure love. 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 Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. 
Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece or just making memories, writing a great American novel or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow. Whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. Okay, Dad. One, two, three. Ah! You saved me. Dad? Are you okay? I'm fine, dude. Your hero needs you now, and AARP is here to help. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. I love visiting with Emery. He is such a sweet, sweet guy. And it's so funny because he became a widower, I became a widow. We were both probably younger than we planned on becoming that. And um, then I lost a child, and thank God he has not lost any children. But um, we all deal with, with crisis, and we all have to learn that we can handle it, that we are strong. And let me tell you something, today's verse that I have to read to y'all kind of explains it. Today is September the 7th, and it says, When we have nothing left but God, we discover that God is more than enough. And that's pretty, pretty incredible and pretty awesome. And I can remember when I lost my husband, I would go to the cemetery three times a day. Don't ask me why. Don't ask me what makes you do that. I was possessed with going by and checking to make sure. I don't know what I was checking on. But it was crazy. But I kept saying, I'm not going to make it. I'm going to fail. I can't do this. I can't do that. And I made it. But it took me several years to finally come out of that dismal, horrible, sad depression. And then life became wonderful again. And today we're going to share a little bit of that wonder with you. So we're going to share a little bit of that. And then we're going to take you to a, uh, a visit here with Angela and Tori. And it's one of the few programs I have with my daughter and my granddaughter together. And it was such a joy to see them smiling, to see them laughing, and what I would give for Angela to have been here for the rest of her daughter's life because Tori is an amazing young woman. She is excelling and, and doing very, very well at um, the TV station up in Anchorage. She loves her life, and she is living life to the fullest. And I think that's a lesson we all should learn no matter what we're facing, remember this. When we have nothing left but God, we discover that God is more than enough. So no matter what you're facing today, and I know so many of our viewers have lost loved ones and, and just dealing with tragedy. But remember, there's a brighter day ahead. Listen to Kaylee Shea's song. It'll tell you right now, live on the bright side. So here we go to some great memories. Just yesterday A flashing time Back when our love was new And I realized how long it's been Since we have taken time To take the time
have a precious little baby's picture to share with y'all and I guarantee you there is a grandmother that is just excited to death because baby Lorelai Bloom was born last week and uh, Beverly Dodson Wildman, you know Larry Dodson, our beautiful friend who is the artist, his great grandbaby came along and um, she is absolutely adorable. She looks like she's gonna run the show and I'm sure she will. And there is she and her grandmother. So how precious, how precious. Beverly, that is the sweetest thing. And look at that. She looks so dead serious. She was like half a day old then. And just so precious, precious, precious. So congratulations. Congratulations. That is such a cool picture. Okay, we're going to take you back to something I'm very, very thankful to have. This is a little bit of the time with my daughter, Angela, and Tori as we shared time together and as we did things that we all loved. We loved doing television, we loved being out among you. Angela loved every moment of coming to visit with y'all and spending time with you and getting to know you. And every single day I sit back and I look at some of the cards and the letters you sent me when she passed away and I realize she did make an impact on you. There are so many people who say, Angela was my favorite co-host. She was always funny. She was always smiling. She was. And at the end, she wasn't. So we're going to share a little bit of the program with Tori and Angela and I. And uh, for just a few moments, you'll get to capture all of us together, three generations, um, as we sat here at ETC many, many years ago. Are we ready? Okay, we're getting there, we're getting there. And I wanna remind y'all, um, you know, as we face what's going on in the world with COVID, if, if we can say a prayer for each other, we have seen so many praise reports. We have seen so many good stories of people coming off ventilators. We have seen good stories of people recovering completely. We have seen good stories of somebody getting a great praise report from a cancer diagnosis. We have seen so many good things and we have the ability, each and every single one of us can pray for each other and we can make a difference. And I think that's what's so important as we face these, these days that often, you know, I feel better when I'm not around <coughs> strangers. I just don't wanna be around people that I'm not familiar with because I don't know where they've been, who they've been around. So I'm trying to be very, very cautious. And uh, I think that we wanna take care of each other. And we wanna pray for each other. Now, here we go to a little bit of time with Angela and Tori and I. Black Forest Cake. I do remember it, and she I remember would, a lot of other things. Yeah, you know, she would I'd make that for my birthday, attention. and it was always the best. It was so good. Homemade from scratch, Black Forest, German Black Forest mm -hmm. cake, you know, mm -hmm. and, and unfortunately, Siggy doesn't have the recipe or can't find it, yeah. you know. He's got a lot of her recipes, but, I mean, it, it would be something for you to do on the show. It was just real One of the German things cake. that Dad makes that was almost is um, it uses crap and apples. Yeah, that's how mm -hmm. we make the sauerkraut at home, right. with onion, apple, and mm -hmm. just, you know, mm -hmm. kraut. Mm -hmm. that's what, when he did that, I said, what are you doing to that kraut? And he yeah. said, I'm cooking it like my yeah. mother did. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And Tori's oma taught her to make a mean German potato salad. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Sometimes I'll be like, Tori, make me a potato salad, uh -huh. please. Uh -huh. I try. It's you know, really it's never, good. It's never going to be the same, right. but it's as good as, you know, a, a next generation. Can I think really one of the good. things your dad mm -hmm. found hard, as he, he's been in America 20 Two Since years. he was 11 and he's 40. No, uh, let's not go was there. Was he 11? Yeah, he was 11. Well, 30. you made me admit that I'm 38. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I'm aging and you're not, so something's <laughs> going right, on there. there. <laughs> but you your know. dad said your, your I'm all left a lot of recipes in German, and he mm -hmm. said, I'm yeah. having a hard time reading them. Yeah, translating. Because he's mm -hmm. been here for so many years that he is very Americanized. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And he said, you know, it's funny because I thought I would never forget German right. and, and I'm having a hard time yeah. with this. So. Yeah, I was yeah. really fortunate that I have a translator that I can travel to Germany with. Mm -hmm. But, you know, even in Germany, he would be like, uh, you know, looking for the word and then it would come. It would just take a few extra seconds. Mm -hmm. But he did really well. You know, it all came back to him like nothing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I was a little envious because here I am like, oh, guten Tag, <laughs> you know. <laughs> That's it. So. Now, what was the chocolate you used to bring me back from Germany? Oh, oh man. man, probably Milka, Nutella, oh, Toblerone. Golly. Oh, man. Who knows? I couldn't mm -hmm. wait till y'all got back because all these little bars. Yeah. And I think you can I just have one more. Can I just have one more? Well, you know, when, when I went with him, we brought back cups of mustard. We did. Mustard. We did it again. Yeah. 
mustard yeah. and it was unbelievable mustard and they were in a like a coffee cup with a, a snap-on lid like on a Pringles can that kind of plastic uh -huh, lid uh -huh. and I was thinking we brought six back we'll never make it with these things intact in the luggage so we wrapped it stuck it in boots and uh, yes, and Siggy still has those coffee cups. Yeah, and every time I see them, I think, oh, man, that was the best mustard. What's the difference in it? There's I don't just, know. It's don't just know. such a good flavor, and, and it's a total difference than any mustard I've ever had mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. Total different, yeah. We Very good. Again. Good enough to it's travel with it in your luggage. Mm -hmm. Now, when you go to Germany, do you find little out-of-the-way places to take photography, or do you, what do you, well, do you settle in on the big buildings, or... I know, I love cobblestone streets. I mean, for me this time, you know, I don't, rem I remember going when I was little, but I remember a lot of castles and things like that and not so much the little details. And that's what I wanted to remember this time. So for me, it was just shooting, 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 shooting. You know, anything that I saw, I would shoot. Like when we passed by these rickety old houses, you know, not that they're rickety or, you know, anything, but you know, they're going through construction because they are old and they need to be mm -hmm. updated after mm -hmm. 400 years. Mm -hmm. So they have all these wood beams across them. So I was like, wow, that's really graphically appealing. So, you know, snap mm -hmm. that or seeing the old lady, you know, knitting her scarf or the little booties, you know, you just look for those little details that mm -hmm. to me, that's Germany. That's yeah. my Germany, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, so I'm everything from Berlin, buildings and you know seeing the the remainder of where the wall was you can see the indention on the street you know and I took a picture of that and it's just mm -hmm. everything really mm -hmm. was this time it wasn't like I was going there with a set goal or anything she so. sees things totally different like when I was in Jacksonville with her her vision now is so changed we were walking and there was a little canopy with the colored lights hanging you know and you were like mom look at this from your perspective you told me to look at it how you saw it as a picture and it was, it was a cool picture, you know, yeah. you could see the framed out and, and uh, it was interesting to see it through your eyes. You know, I would have normally just looked and thought, oh, that's kind of cool looking, you know, <laughs> but then yeah. you saw the picture there and it was neat. Yeah, it's, you know, it's kind of like, I mean, your world perspective, it does change, you know, mm -hmm. and like, I hope to convey that to someone else that where they can be like, wow, you know, I never thought about that. And, mm -hmm. you know, not that like everything I'm going to take pictures of is going to be beautiful flowers and nothing like that, you know, like, I may go to Iraq, I may cover war stories, you know, we don't know right now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if I can just convey to someone like, this is how it really is, mm -hmm. I'll be happy. Mm -hmm. That'll be done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Speaking of that, yesterday Tammy Collins brought me pictures mm -hmm. for Donovan on the veterans tribute that he's doing. And one of them was of David Collins standing, mm -hmm. taking his orders to re-enlist in Iraq with an American flag behind him. And one of his fellow soldiers took this picture. And when I looked at it, I just got cold chills and I mm -hmm. teared up. And I said, that is an award-winning photograph. What a precious, precious memory. Three generations. Um, it's amazing to me that those days ended. Um, I would give anything in the world if my daughter had not chosen suicide. Um, it is one of those things, often in a split second, you make a decision that changes your family's dynamics forever. Mm -hmm. If you know somebody who is battling depression, please reach out to them, please get them help. Please know that you are loved and no matter what you are facing, Remember what I just said, when we have nothing left but God, we discover that God is more than enough. If you are battling, battling depression, pick up the phone and call your pastor, call your friend, call a neighbor, talk to somebody. Do not take yourself away from your family. Uh, it's really, really hard to handle, but I have learned from this that when the warning signs are there, you've got to step up and you've got to get some help. So please do that. Okay, we're going to end today with a little music from a gentleman that um, he, he just won my heart. I just loved him. He was so sweet. And um, I haven't checked in on him in a long time. I don't know if he's even still among, among us. But he was a wonderful gentleman who loved to sing. And you saw him, I think the last time you saw him was at Singing in the Mountains a few years ago. So hit, sit back and enjoy a little bit of music from Delane Dills up in McKaysville, Georgia. Well, I'm tired and so weary, but I must go on till the Lord comes to call, call me away. Oh, yes. 
With a morning so bright And the land is light And the night, night is as fast as the day Oh, yes, there will be peace in the valley for me someday. There will be peace in the valley for me. No trouble, troubles I see. There will be peace, peace in the valley for me. The path will be gentle and the wood will be tame. 